The annualized rate of inflation last month reached 8.6 percent, which is the highest level in more than 40 years. The Federal Reserve increased its benchmark interest rate by 75 basis points last week in reaction, the highest increase since 1994. The stock market experienced its worst single week since the beginning of the COVID crisis as a result of high inflation and aggressive central bank tightening. And economists are now gloomily predicting a repeat of the late 1970s and early 1980s, when similar inflation and high interest rates caused market weakness and a severe recession. However, for long-term investors, the situations may not be that dire. Price reductions due to the general market slump can present opportunities to purchase premium brands in struggling industries. In fact, Barron Capital's billionaire investing legend, Ron Barron, sees the current market as a massive once-in-a-generation purchasing opportunity. Luckily for you, Fortune Fastlaner, for today's video, we will be talking about the secret of Ron Barron in picking the best stocks to buy. Remember that while the first step is completing any of this amazing information, the second and possibly more important step is taking action even if it's an imperfect action. Finding stocks that are currently declining but are expected to rise in value later on is crucial for investors. We identified three undervalued stocks with a strong buy rating from the analyst community using TipRank's database. Not to add that despite the difficult market conditions, each has a 50% upside potential. Let's look more closely. Wallbox We'll start with Spanish company Wallbox, a leader in the EV charging industry. Wallbox offers a variety of charging equipment for use in both the home and the workplace, working on both the commercial and residential sides of EV charging. Touchscreen controls and universal plugs are features of chargers. The first bi-directional charger device, which Wallbox is especially proud to offer, enables a fully charged EV to deliver power to the user's home or even to the power grid, effectively transforming the EV into a storage battery while it isn't being used as a vehicle. Since its business merger with the SPAC firm, in October of last year, Wallbox has been traded publicly. WBX shares have fallen by 47% so far this year, having peaked at $18.50 in November since their Wall Street debut. However, they were still trading close to $17 as 2022 got underway. Even though Wallbox posted outstanding financial results, the share price has dropped significantly. In the company's 1Q22 report, which was published last month, the top line increased by 192% to 28.3 million euros. This was fueled by charger sales that increased by 180% year over year, or about 51,000 units, and by gross margin of 41% that exceeded internal projections. Wallbox anticipates full year sales of between 175 million and 205 million euros in 2022 which equates to year-over-year -year annual growth of between 145% and 190%. Gabrielle Dowd, a Cohen analyst, is delighted with the company's rapid progress and writes, with a diverse range of solutions enabling U.S. expansion and energy management change, Wallbox avails itself to $293 billion of required investment in hardware globally between 2022 to 2030. Manufacturing vertical integration enables the business to manage a challenging supply chain environment and generate best-in-class gross margins of around 40%. We anticipate that WBX will inflect to positive FCF in 2026, with potential upside from new software offerings like Sirius. With an outperform rating and a $14 share price objective, that represents a 63% increase over the next 12 months. Dawod quantifies his outlook on WBX shares. Wallbox hasn't simply won Dawod over. Five recent analyst assessments, including four buys and one hold, support the stock's strong buy consensus rating. The shares have a price of $8.58 and a strong upside potential of 92% this year is indicated by their average price objective of $16.50. Holdings by Generac The second stock is Generac, 
a producer of electrical power generators with headquarters in Wisconsin. In order to provide power in the event of a grid breakdown, the company's generators are built as backup units for usage in the domestic, light commercial, and industrial markets. With 15 kilowatt devices suited for residential use to multi-megawatt power systems for the industrial sector, Generac offers a wide range of generator units, even modest portable generators for use in a workshop or while camping is available to customers. Generac has consistently added new products to its lineup while searching for new markets where backup power production might be applied. The business recently introduced new items for the markets for portable generators and EVs, while the second introduces dual fuel capabilities to the portable generator market, with models able to run on both LP gas and conventional gasoline. The first offers answers to charging problems for vehicles. Generac's successful sales performance has been largely attributed to its new, high-quality product line. Over the previous few years, the company's top line has steadily increased, with eight consecutive sequential quarterly sales increases. Generac recently announced $1.14 billion in top-line revenue, a 41% year-over-year increase. Sales of residential products rose by 43%, and commercial and industrial product sales also saw an increase of 38%. While revenues were increasing, profitability was declining. Adjusted net income for the first quarter was $135 million, down from $153 million in the corresponding quarter last year. Per share, this resulted in a decrease of $2.38 to $2.09 over the previous year. Trading in Generac stock has been erratic this year, with jarring swings both up and down. The stock has lost 33% so far this year. Donovan Schaffer, a Northland analyst, has firmly shifted from the bullish side for this stock despite the share price decline. He outlines three reasons why he believes Generac is well-positioned to proceed. 1. GNRC dominates the expanding U.S. home standby market, with enduring competitive advantages and about 75 market share. 2. It is ideally positioned to understand and navigate the terrain of the energy transition and therefore get the most out of its burgeoning clean energy business. And 3 has a large global footprint acquired from 2010 to 2018 that flies under the radar and could seize opportunities as they arise. Schaffer bases his outperform rating on these remarks and sets a price objective of $370 for GNRC shares, representing a 57% 12-month upside potential. When we take a step back and consider the bigger picture, we can see that Generac has received 16% analyst reviews, and the consensus opinion on the stock is strong buy, with a buy-to-hold ratio of 15 to 1, with an average price objective of $399.33, and a current price of $233.50. The stock might see a significant 70% increase in the coming year. Blackstone Capital Last but not least is California-based commercial bank Silvergate, which specializes in investing in digital currencies. Since its founding in 1988, Silvergate has dominated the investment in digital currencies for almost 10 years. The business has been profitable for 24 years running and provides services to many different institutional investors and digital currency exchanges. Silvergate shares have dropped 58% so far this year, a dramatic decline that has corresponded with the steep declines we've also witnessed in the cryptocurrency markets. Silvergate's digital currency company has been growing despite the recent challenges the crypto sector has faced. Despite a decline in currency exchange transactions, Silvergate nonetheless experienced income growth. The bank recorded a first quarter net income of $27.4 million, up 115% from the previous quarter and up 28% from the fourth quarter of 2011. The bank made $0.79 cents per diluted share in revenue. In his analysis of Silvergate for Wells Fargo, analyst Jared Shaw contends that investors should take a closer look at SI shares right away. 
through its Silvergate Exchange Network, which is used by some of the biggest exchanges and institutional clients in the cryptocurrency market, SI has developed a powerful network effect. According to the author, higher spread income will result from a zero-cost deposit base and further SEN growth when rates climb. Future potential includes leverage and the implementation of a payments network using SI-issued stablecoins. The bank's growth profile should be maintained by further institutional acceptance of cryptocurrencies and SI's production innovation. The bear case is, in our opinion, largely priced in at the present levels, which provides a compelling entry point. It makes sense given the viewpoint that Shaw ranks the stock as overweight. He projects a one-year gain of 93% for the shares with a price objective of $120. Overall, eight Wall Street analysts out of the nine that recently assessed this stock gave it a buy rating compared to only one hold, giving it a strong buy consensus rating. The shares are currently trading for $62.32 and have an average target of $175.89, indicating a potential gain of almost 182% in the near future. At Barron Capital, the investment company he formed in 1982, Ron Barron serves as chairman, CEO, and portfolio manager. Watch as one of our mentors questioned the head of Barron Funds about the qualities he seeks in growth firms, what he highlights to his analysts and portfolio managers, and the stocks he currently likes. You are an expert in growth investment which among other things entails looking for business with the potential for faster than average profit development. How do you search? Everyone can comprehend what a growth firm is. The ability to perceive competitive advantage, which is the most crucial factor, is challenging for the majority of people. That is something that an algorithm cannot determine. You must comprehend how a corporation runs and what makes it challenging for rivals to compete. It might have a license, patents, or a technological advantage. For instance, Tesla's culture for quick innovation contributes to its competitive edge. Tesla, which has a 10-year advantage in producing electric vehicles and batteries, has completely changed the automotive business. We make investments based on what we believe a company will be valued in 5 or 10 years, rather than what it is currently worth. About every five to six years, we've aimed to quadruple our financial resources. We've been able to do that by making long-term investments in companies we think have a competitive advantage and are run by excellent people. We are more concerned with businesses than with stocks and stock markets. What do you emphasize to your analysts and portfolio managers? I tell them two things are crucial. Competitive advantage comes in first place. Management or those in charge of running firms comes in second. These CEOs must be gifted, extremely intelligent, excellent leaders, diligent, motivating, and visionary. Meeting individuals allows you to determine that. Getting into the game is standard fare. The second factor, possibly the most crucial factor of all, is whether you can put your trust in the people. That judgment calls for expertise. I ask our analysts, among other things, what would you need to know to make such an investment? If your family's well-being were entirely dependent upon the success of the business in which you are recommending we invest, challenge everything. Why did you decide to become such a long-term investor? In 1970, when I first started working as a young analyst for brokerage firms, I gave institutional clients advice on growth stocks including Disney, McDonald's, Federal Express, and Nike. I advised selling when those stocks swiftly increased in value by two or three times. My pay was predicted on commissions rather on long-term profitability of the companies I suggested. When I checked back on all those sell suggestions from 1970s, almost all the equities had increased significantly. I came to the conclusion that having the ability to purchase and hold excellent growing firms for a long time was crucial to become a successful investor. To do just that, we established Barron Capital in 1982. Due to the constant pressure to perform, we still hold the belief that the majority of fund managers and analysts are unable to invest and provide recommendations for the long term. We have built a strong track record over the past 40 years which has allowed us to become long-term investors. 
very few other companies have outperformed benchmark returns. But 98.5% of Barron's assets have outperformed stock market returns over the long run, frequently by several percentage points yearly. Do you ever stick to equities that underperform for a number of years? I agree, that occurs frequently. Tesla is one illustration. Between 2014 and 2016, we contributed $380 million to Tesla, despite the fact that we thought we could make 20 times our money in 10 years. We thought it was a hazardous investment at that time, so we only put less than 2% of our company's assets into the stock. We viewed it as hazardous since producing automobiles is highly regulated, capital-intensive industry, and few believed Elon Musk's electric car company would be successful, especially given that politically strong oil firms, hedge funds, and politicians were united in their opposition. Tesla sales multiple tenfold during the next five or six years. However, despite being incredibly erratic, its share price remained rather stable for the majority of that time. We were accurate, and Tesla's sales have continued to soar. Tesla's share price climbed by roughly 20 times between 2019 and 2021, and we made a profit of about $7 billion on our first investment. Over the next 10 years, we anticipate making at least 3 to 5 times as much money. How often do you sell stocks and why? We sell mostly for three reasons. First, we gradually cut holdings if an investment does exceptionally well and as a result makes up an excessively big portion of diverse portfolios. About $1 billion worth of Tesla stock or 15% of our stake in the company has been sold. Second, the return we need or what we call our hurdle rate may potentially quadruple in 5 or 6 years. In our opinion, the majority of the time, we can achieve that return by making investments in companies that have the potential to grow their profitability, cash flow, and other value-creating factors by 15% annually. As a business matures, if its growth rate drops to 7-8% to annually, it becomes a candidate for sale. Finally, if we discover that we were mistaken, we sell as soon as we reasonably can. Do you spend any time examining interest rates, GDP projections, and other macroeconomic indicators? Macro judgments are not a crucial component of our process. I don't know when a recession will occur, and I don't think anyone else can either. Nobody, even me, can forecast when the market will increase. Since I've been doing this for 52 years, nobody has ever consistently and correctly predicted the direction of the stock market or the economy. Most investors try to predict things that, in my opinion, are impossible to do so, such as interest rates, oil prices, wars, and election results. Inflation is one thing about which we can be confident. A significant issue has always been inflation. According to my estimate of my personal cost of living, inflation has typically ranged between 4 and 5% per year over the course of my 79-year lifespan and 52-year profession. As a result, your money loses half of its value approximately every 14 or 15 years. In order to protect our money's purchasing power and to take part in the economic expansion of our nation, we invest in growth stocks. Although inflation will occasionally be higher and occasionally lower, it will always exist. That's it for this video, Fortune Fast Laner. Remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person. As a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you on the next one.